Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to show you is how we go about expanding brackets like this. We've got two brackets essentially in this example being multiplied together. Two brackets here. Here we've got two brackets with one term on the outside and in this example, three brackets. And I've picked these examples to give you a general idea of the kind of thing that you can expect to have to expand. If you feel you can do these and just want to do it as part of your revision, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can check your working with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Well, first of all, what we've got essentially is two brackets, say, with quite a number of terms in each bracket. Something like this, OK, where you can see I've got at least three terms here and I've got at least three terms here. It doesn't matter how many terms you've got in each bracket, OK? Like in this one here, we've got two terms here and two terms in this one. In this example, we've got three terms in the first bracket and two terms in the second bracket and so on. So when we expand things like this, we take our first term and we multiply it with the first term in the next bracket. Then we take our first term again and multiply it now with the second term in the bracket and so on. First term multiplied by the third term for as many terms as it takes to multiply A with, with all of these in here. Once we've done that, we next move on to our second term, in this case B, and we multiply B with the first term, P here, and then we multiply B with the next term, the Q, and we do B with the third term, R, and keep going on down through each of the terms in the next bracket. Next we move on to C, and we multiply C with the first term, in this case P, C with the next term, Q, and C with the next term, R, and again, so on, all the way through the terms in the bracket, until we've exhausted all our multiplications. OK, so that's just generally how we go about expanding these kind of things. So let's go to the first one now and work with this idea. In fact, what we'll do is we'll just section this off at this stage, OK? So just put that in that box there. Anyway, so going back to this first one, what we've got then, and notice I use the identical sign rather than equals. It's not an equation. We're just writing an identical expression to this. So we take this x and we multiply it with the x here and then we go on to do x times the minus 3. So x times x is x squared. And then we've got x times minus 3, which is minus 3x. And then we've got 2 times x. Now we go on to this second term. 2 times the first term here is 2 times x is 2x. And then 2 times the minus 3 is minus 6. Now we've got four terms here. And now we can group up the two x terms. So what we've got then is that this is identical to the first term here, x squared. And then we've got minus 3x plus 2x, which is minus x. And then we've got the constant on the end, minus 6. OK. Now with example 2, we'll say that this is identical to. And... We now take our x squared and multiply it by each of the two terms in this bracket. Then move on to the 3x, multiply it by each of the two terms, and then the minus 2, multiply that with each of the two terms. So doing this, we get x squared times 2x squared, which is going to be 2x to the power 4. x squared now times the minus 1 gives us minus x squared. So we've exhausted multiplying with the x squared. Now we move on to the 3x. So it's 3x times each of these two terms. 3x times 2x squared gives us plus 6x cubed. And then 3x times the minus 1 is minus 3x. 
We've finished that. We now go on to the minus 2. Minus 2 times each of these two terms. So minus 2 times 2x squared is minus 4x squared. And then minus 2 times minus 1, well that's plus 2. So again, we've got a lot of terms here, and we can simplify this. We can group up equivalent type terms. We haven't got any x to the power 4 terms except this first term here. So that's just going to be 2x to the power 4. We've got an x cubed term here. It's just 6x cubed. It's the only one, so we'll just put plus 6x cubed. But when it comes to x squared terms, we've got minus x squared minus another 4x squared. So that's going to be minus 5x squared. As for x terms, we've just got the minus 3x. And we've only got the constant here, plus 2. All right. Now with example 3, you can see that I've got three things now being multiplied together. The minus 2 multiplied by the 3a minus 2 multiplied by the 4a minus 1. Now in situations like this, just do the brackets first. Hold back on the minus 2. Okay, so what we've got here is minus 2 multiplied by, and we'll just keep open the bracket and we'll expand this, okay, just like we did up here. So we do 3a times 4a, which is going to be 12a squared. And then we've got 3a times minus 1, which is minus 3a. Next, I do minus 2 times the 4a, minus 1. So minus 2 times 4a is going to be minus 8a. And then we've got minus 2 times minus 1, which is plus 2. And what I'm going to do next is just clean up the brackets, simplify it. So we'll still hold back with that minus 2. And we've got just 12a squared in here, but we've got 2a terms. We've got minus 3a minus 8a, which is a total of minus 11a. And then we've got the constant there, plus 2. So if we expand this out now, we've got minus 2 times 12a squared, which is minus 24a squared. And then minus 2 times minus 11a is going to be plus 22a. And then minus 2 times plus 2 is going to be minus 4. There's no terms there that are the same kind of terms, so we finish it at that point, okay? Now you could have done this sum in other ways, okay? I wouldn't really encourage it, but you could multiply the minus 2 with this bracket here and get minus 6a plus 4. And then you would multiply minus 6a plus 4 with the 4a minus 1. And you should try it. You should pause the video, try it, and check that you get this answer at the end of the day. Or you could multiply the minus 2 with just the 4a minus 1, giving you minus 8a plus 2. And then multiply 3a minus 2 with minus 8a plus 2. And again, check that you should get that answer. Don't make the mistake, though, of multiplying each of these brackets by minus 2. Okay, you only select one of them if you're going to do that method. But that's why I wouldn't encourage you to do it that way. I would still go with the method that I've chosen here. Okay? Right, now we've got the last example, number 4 here, where we've got three brackets being multiplied together. And when you get something like this, just group up a pair of brackets and multiply that pair together. And for something like this, I, it's generally best to just pair off these two brackets on the end and expand those. So what we've got is that this is identical to the first bracket, 5x minus 2, multiplied by the result of expanding these two brackets. We'll do it this way, okay? And then we can experiment maybe later on, or you can experiment later on. So we get x multiplied by the 2x, so that's going to give us 2x squared. 
Then we could do x times the plus 1. So that's going to be plus 1x or just simply x. Now we do minus 2 times the 2x and the plus 1. So minus 2 times 2x is minus 4x. And then minus 2 times the plus 1 is minus 2. And I can see that I can simplify this bracket. So I'm going to do that before I multiply out with 5x minus 2. So we'll just simplify this bracket. We've got 2x squared. And in here we've got plus x minus 4x, which is going to be minus 3x. And then we've got the constant here, minus 2. Now I just expand this bracket out, OK, in the usual way. Take 5x and multiply it by each of the terms inside the bracket. And then minus 2 times each of the terms in the bracket. So 5x times 2x squared gives me 10x cubed. And then 5x times minus 3x is going to be minus 15x squared. 5x times the minus 2 now gives us minus 10x. So that's that one done. And now we move on to minus 2 times each of the three terms inside the bracket. Minus 2 times 2x squared is going to be minus 4x squared. Minus 2 times the minus 3x is plus 6x. And minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. So all we need to do is just simplify this by grouping up our terms that are similar. We've only got one x cubed term. It's the 10x cubed. We've got several x squared terms, we've got minus 15x squared minus another 4x squared. So that's a total of minus 19x squared. x terms now, we've got minus 10x plus 6x. That's going to be minus 4x. And lastly, we have this constant on the end, plus 4. So there's your answer, OK, when we expand these brackets. Now, I would suggest you try and experiment with this. Why not try expanding, say, the first two brackets and multiplying that with 2x plus 1? Again, check that you get this answer. You could even, not that I would really encourage it, but you could even multiply the 5x minus 2 with the 2x plus 1. And then... With that answer, multiply it with the x minus 2. And again, you should find you get the same answer. But if I'm given something like this, I would always go generally for this particular style, where I multiply out the last two brackets. OK, well, I hope that's given you an idea that you can now model examples that are similar to these on this idea. All right.